Osimeters are used to study processes in the Veda zone uh, as experiments that are conducted either in the laboratory or the field. The lysimeter is shown here. Uh, this is at least one version of a lysimeter. This is a tube that is uh, going to be filled with soil and then sensors are put in the side of the tube to measure the water content and uh, other types of sensors could also be used. Uh, water is added to the top of the lysimeter. It flows down through the soil and then it flows out the bottom uh, through a drain at the, the bottom of the lysimeter. And these devices can be put in the laboratory and uh, used to uh, study flow and transport in the lab or uh, this is an example over here on the right of a setup where lysimeters are deployed outside. Uh, in, in this case each one of these is a lysimeter and they're put inside this container and then uh, backfilled so that the tops of the lysimeters are exposed and uh, rainfall then can enter the lysimeter and flow down through them and it's, uh, it's then collected uh, here in uh, containers. And in this way the lysimeters can be exposed to temperature and uh, rainfall variations that are, are natural, uh, but they can uh, be set up and monitored in a very controlled way. Uh, so we'll use a lysimeter as our first uh, model for uh, understanding flow in the Veda zone. And we're going to just initially assume that the flow goes just vertically downward through the lysimeter. So our approach to doing this analysis will be to assume that the soil and lysimeter is partially saturated. As a result, we'll use Richard's equation to do the analysis. The flow will be assumed to be one-dimensional. Further or additional analyses will be done later on where we assume 2D and 3D flow. We need to set up the properties of the fluid and the soil and this will require that we uh, specify the hydraulic and water retention properties for unsaturated flow. The analysis itself will be conducted in three steps. In step one, we'll equilibrate the, well, basically step one is going to involve uh, filling the soil, or filling the tube with soil, and then um, we'll have valves on the top and the bottom of the soil and we'll set the soil upright, we'll have the valves closed, and we'll just simulate how the water redistributes within the column, uh, within the lysimeter, as a function of time. So that'll be step one. Uh, it's just as if we were to set the lysimeter up and let it equilibrate with a valve closed at the bottom. And then in step two, we'll open that valve and we'll let water drain out of the lysimeter. Uh, and then we'll let that system equilibrate. That will, initially we'll have no flow at the top and the bottom for step one, and then in step two we'll uh, specify that there's no flow at the top of the model, but the pressure at the bottom is equal to zero. And then step three, this is really what we're interested in. What is the effect of a rainfall uh, on the moisture content, uh, water content in the, in the soil, and the flow. So we'll uh, evaluate a rainfall that is uh, two centimeters per hour uh, for one hour long. What happens when that rainfall occurs? And then um, uh, it, it, it we'll evaluate the um, effects during the rainfall, and then we'll uh, evaluate it after the rainfall to look at how the system equilibrates after the, the rain occurs. And so to do that, we'll have the mass flux at the top of the model specified at um, 0.02 meters per hour. And we're going to need to get this in terms of a mass flux. So this uh, 0.02 meters per hour is the volumetric flux. We get it in terms of uh, uh, meters per second by this conversion and then uh, we multiply by the density of the water to get 
the mass flux in, in these units. And we'll do this, uh, we'll specify this um, mass flux as a smooth square step. So the rainfall will uh, start um, abruptly at 1,000 seconds. It will go for an hour, so it will end at 4,600 seconds. Uh, that's the, the, the square part of it. Um, so it'll be a uniform rainfall rate, but we'll, we'll ramp it up um, from zero up to this rate and then ramp it back down. The smooth part of it means that we'll ramp it up abruptly but it won't be instantaneously so we'll ramp it up f gradually I think in this simulation we'll ramp it up over about a hundred seconds okay so that's going to be our general approach when we set this model up we're going to need to um, have some uh, properties that we'll use to describe the soil and the um, water retention characteristics and so these are the different properties that we'll use. This is the hydraulic conductivity. And then these properties here will be used in the Van Gennuchten water retention uh, formula that we'll need to specify in the, the problem. We'll also have the uh, compressibility of the water and the aquifer.